Uh, Chuka, you don't even need to ask. You know, of course, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a good man. <laughs> Laws are the engine oil that powers the regulation of societal norms and values. But leadership is that engine. So the panacea for regeneration in Nigeria are not sets of finely crafted laws, but a few good men. Laws, no matter how beautifully crafted, without good leadership to ensure proper implementation, will end up as paper tigers. To say Nigeria is a nation in dead need of leadership is an understatement. Not because of lack of laws or the fact that our constitution is defective in so many ways than just the absence of a true federal structure, but because of the absence of a few good men to implement the ones we have, our leaders see this appointment as opportunity to be served rather than to serve. Hence, public service is labored come chop. It wasn't because of the fallibility of Rwanda laws that made the country what it has become today after rising from the ashes of war, but because of the efforts of a few good men led by the president Paul Kagame. We never heard of the rigidity of the laws in Dubai until we saw the beauty that the country has become, made possible by leaders, a few good men also. The laws in Europe to enhance a better society and create better standards of prosperity for mankind were not drafted by God for the society, but by a few good men who thereafter ensure that their society lived by those set of laws. Every society, no matter how barbaric, desires such good men. Hence, in 2011, after going through a tortuous journey of democratic experience, led by a few men whose good we couldn't guarantee, and in our search for elusive dividend, we as a people, desires of a few good men, felt if we elect a graduate who didn't wear shoes as a young lad, we might be on our path to building a nation of our dreams. Alas, a man wore shoes in office and turned out to be everything but good. And in 2015, most politicians in collaboration with civil society felt that they found that good man, being a retired but not tired general, they had hoped he was going to perspire his strength to refire us into that nation which we had always aspired to be. But alas, he has retired us into oblivion and insecurity. Unfortunately, his physician of 95, 97% who voted for him and the non-inclusion of the 5% who didn't vote for him, coupled with the hailing and wailings of the rest of us, threw through the window whatever good was left of these men whom we thought were good. No nation develops with beautifully crafted laws alone, but the deeds of the good men who makes, executes, interpret, and implement such laws, no matter how woefully made. This is where the men in our legislative, executive, and judicial arm of government have all failed us. Without a few good men who we put the nation first before self, men who we see love for mankind as religion rather than Christianity and Muslim dichotomy, good men who will not fan the embers of Boko Haram and arm bandits by granting them amnesty and rehabilitation while our soldiers are people allowed to die endlessly, men who will say what they mean and mean what they say, men who will not openly embrace nepotism even after promising to be equitable, but would rather see merit in anyone irrespective of tribe or tongue. Men who will not deodorize corruption, but painfully fight it by putting in place processes to make it unattractive. Men who will see campaign promises are not just slogans for campaign, but as a pact with the people that must be fulfilled. Men who will not be deceptive to the extent of believing their own lies or wanting to borrow $500 million to enable us to compare with CNN when with all the money spent so far, we have not even been able to compete with channels, TV, or AIT, or Plus TV even. Can such men still be found in Nigeria? I dare say yes, I'm one of them. Anyway, my wishes are just mere tall, ambitious, and impossible dreams against our current political reality with our present set of leaders, where everyone is waiting for their turn to chop or would rather pray than walk. My advocacy today would therefore be, if we must restructure and progress as a nation, we must first and foremost seek not the amendment of our constitution because the current crop of rulers will always amend it to suit themselves, but rather than pray endlessly, let's go tell it in gas, publish it in the street of Ashkelon, search for them wherever they are, those few good men, and when we find them, push and support them with the will and zeal with which we supported Jonathan in 2011 before he found his shoes, or the strength we collectively had to defy the sun and rain to support Buhari in 2015 before he misplaced his resort in INEX Ava and changed his next level. Then and only then can we talk of change or the beginning of creating a country where peace, justice, equality, 
and fairness we reign. Otherwise, we will continue to idealize mediocrity as good governance and celebrate the demonstration of a few crazy people in the madness we call democracy. I beg to rise. Please rise, <laughs> rise, rise and sit. Right. Okay. I mean, I think generally, just very quickly, because like, there's a lot there, and I know everybody wants to throw in. You know, I, I, I like where you're going, that you're saying, let's look for the heart, because no matter what laws you put there, if someone's heart is already towards chopping, they will find a way to make that law work towards their pocket. Um, but then, because you say we should go and seek for them, I, I turn it back on us again. Because I'm saying that, you know, sometimes it's like we're suffering from what people have termed Stockholm Syndrome, where we're still idolizing you. know, somebody is abusing you, but you still find some things to celebrate about them. You don't recognize that they're, they're not the big, they're not the real, the real deal. So the only way for us, and I'm, partly why I think, and this is me doing some analysis, psychoanalysis here, why are we unable to hold our leaders accountable to a zero, zero tolerance, you know, expectation? is because we ourselves are compromised in our own work in our own stance. So if we start to exact those same demands we want to place on, our, on ourselves and say in the midst of the Nigeria as it is, I will not do this, I will not um, pay bribe, I will not cut corners, I will not, then you will now feel entitled to something like that from your, you know. But as long as you, you're cutting God, you say, well, I, I, Nigeria is difficult, at least let him chop as long as he gives me a little, because that is your standard of achievement. But if you raise your own, then you too will not tolerate nonsense. You say, no, because I'm, I'm living like this. Why should this man, who is the, on my behalf, talking nonsense, step aside, let somebody else represent well, me? I mean, I agree with you, I can, in the sense that, yes, we change starts with us, you know, to an extent. But at the same time, I think our leaders need to lead. They need, need to lead by example. Like, for instance, today, you know, on our way in, um, there was a queue, and the police who are supposed to be, you know, policing us, taking care of traffic and whatnot. They were the ones that just drove recklessly in yes. front of us, went, siren, everything. Typical. And, you know, we're sitting there and we're thinking, oh, okay. So, but if the police did the right thing, then we ourselves will be... No, we're saying the same thing. What I'm even saying is that but we, for us to recognize that the police are off track and, mm -hmm. and insist that they do the right thing, we need to be... We need to have a high standard ourselves. Yeah, but so a lot of times people will accept the police for, behavior and yeah. even do a ballet for them because they're not expecting much from them because you notice as the police are breaking, they, they are also joining behind. Mm -hmm. So people are with the same mentality of the police that if they were in their position, they would abuse power. Yeah. So they're not expecting but, but much from them. But we all know that leaders. there's one law for in, in losing a, in power a, and one law for the rest in, of us. In a That's state of lawlessness, it is illegal to be law-abiding. Mm. That is why leadership <laughs> should live yes. by example. No, we agree, but for, for the followers to even recognize what good leadership looks like, they too need to have some integrity in their own lives. Absolutely. Yeah, I make excuses I for leaders all the time. I agree with... Liberals to some extent, <laughs> yeah, I know and, you but don't. I I believe that um, the framework, you know, should be more important than the leadership. Okay. If if you have leaders who are not regulated, like for instance, Nigeria is the only country I know where the president can allocate oil wells to whoever he chooses, or security votes, or security exists. votes. Yeah, you understand? It's not questioned. Mm. I don't think that is correct. We need to look at our constitution. That constitution needs to be reworked. That constitution would define how we as a people want to live, how our leaders, who the leaders would be, and what standards we would expect from them. And make them servants rather exactly. than... Exactly. No, For instance, what is happening in America today, we have... Uh, I think supposedly, it should be America, but you let's, understand? Let's but, face, no, let's I'm, face I'm, going, I'm getting saying. somewhere, but he's, Who regulated, will rework the he's regulated by certain standards that he can't change. That is Who embedded will rework in the no. Constitution. First of all, left to Donald Trump today, he would have cancelled the right with any citizenship. No, 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 let me finish. Let Trump he would have say that the He's saying that the American system works. Yes, but let me explain. Was it the law first? It's the same American system we have. Was it the law first or the people? Was it the law first? The question, the I know, Sadie, you're always you're, you're about the foundation, but yes. I can tell you that there, there is no fair Perfect foundation, foundation because yeah. every single human being comes from different backgrounds, different disadvantages and whatnot. The difference is in the attitude of the individual. We need That's to sit where down the few and negotiate. Good, no, forget, we need forget to sit down and you have can, a discussion. No, but you know, he has a point. Because the even the examples Libras of the, gave of Dubai the, the and uh, Rwanda, you find that they have different styles of yeah. governance, like but the man has a heart yeah. Yeah. to do the right thing. Yeah, if, the dictator, if, if we had she, left Babadida today, maybe... The sometimes do good, is what you're saying. Yeah, do you know, uh, let me let me answer this. Framework. I didn't want to say Is something, it the but because it, the, Baba Dubai, Akonde, Dubai, if you gave it to a, a dictator, you would deal with us here. Yeah. But Baba, he, he seems to be doing the right see, thing. By uh, his Kene, 
at Baba Adebisi Akonde said something in the days of ACN. He said, look, we are we need benevolent detectors. Mm. So we are, we are benevolent detectors. Mm. And so we want to do good. Mm. Why do you think people voted massively for Buhari? When all is said and done, it all boils down to good leadership. In other words, a few good men and women. Is it all right, Ikene? <laughs> That's right, Libras. That's why I'll be looking at the legacy we as individuals leave for our future leaders, our sons and daughters, after the break. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.